Hey, what's up, Baltimore? Welcome to the Voices of the People podcast, presented to you by Greater Baltimore Urban League. This podcast is your dynamic platform for authentic conversations, diverse perspectives, and uplifting narratives from the heart of our community. Get ready to tune in and be inspired as we amplify the voices of change makers, innovators, and everyday heroes, shaping the fabric of Baltimore and beyond. From insightful interviews to empowering stories of resilience and progress, Voices of the People is your go-to destination for positivity, empowerment, and connection. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Voices of the People podcast. It's your favorite host, Shia Rice. And I am here today interviewing the third longest volunteer at the Greater Baltimore Urban League. I'm going to let this queen introduce herself. So I, my name is Estelle Young, and I have been um, a volunteer for the Urban League for a very, very, very happy um, 12 years now and I started with the with the league in um, November of 2011 and I've gotten to participate in a bazillion wonderful projects with them since then. Okay so tell us what motivated you to want to be Mm. a gilder an urban leaguer because once you're in the urban league in any facet you're an urban leaguer for life. And I believe that to be true. Yes that is true. So I was actually kind of, I was looking around for something purposeful to do, Mm -hmm. um, some organization to connect to, and um, a member of the board, um, her name was Patricia Fields, Mm -hmm. and she and I had worked together on a project where I had brought students from Morgan State University to the um, Youth Detention Center. Okay. And um, she was a volunteer coordinator over there, so we worked together there. And this was maybe a year later that I was wandering around looking for um, looking for something to do. And so and stumbled she, into the army. I did. She said, yeah. I have someone you need to meet. And yes. she um, arranged a meeting with me and um, Howard Henderson, oh. Jay Howard, who was okay. president at the time. And he sat down with me. Shout out to Mr. Henderson. Shout we out love to, you here at the Urban League. Yes, yes, yeah. very much so. Um, <laughs> And I, a month later, I was um, designing a program and writing a grant for him working with uh, Middle School Franklin Square uh, Elementary Middle School after school program. Um, So that was my first project with the the Urban League and after school program. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and the after school program, was it tutoring? Was it? It was NESPE, the National Society for Black Engineers, their Mm -hmm. junior program. Okay. And um, so it was supposed to be mentoring and tutoring. And it really, it was, no, it was not a flop because it did have an impact. But it it, it taught us that you don't want to be connected to just one school and therefore dependent on the specific people on that school. So that immediately germinated the idea of Saturday Leadership Program serving the entire city. You know, the Saturday Leadership Program is the Urban League's longest program so far. That's been around for... Since the fall of 2013. The fall of 2013. Mm-hmm. And you helped to create that. I did. Okay. So, so our Saturday Leadership Program, I will let Dr. Young explain. So, Dr. Young, please explain to us in depth what the Saturday Leadership Program is. Okay. So, after we had this semi-struggle mm-hmm. with the first school, then Mr. Henderson came in one day and he said, you know what? I would like to have... A Saturday school. He called it Saturday school. Mm-hmm. And I would like the um, young people to be able to go to different colleges. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to hold it at the colleges. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to um, have them come in at 8 mm-hmm. and go until okay. 2 in the afternoon. And then we'll have it include a college tour, but we'll do some kind of um, you know meaningful workshop or two. Yeah. I want the young professionals to be involved as the facilitators, and I want the guild to do um, the registration at that, you know, take uh, do attendance. Okay. And I want the guild to call parents to remind them to come, stuff like that, or okay. stuff the envelopes to do the mailings for the parents. So he had okay. a, a task for the guild, a task for the young professionals, and um, he said, oh, we don't have any money 
Zero. <laughs> there was not one penny for it. Okay. And, <laughs> okay. So, and I want at least a hundred kids. Yeah. So okay. There you go. So um, well, we had volunteers. We had the two auxiliaries. So mm -hmm. that's a big thing about the Urban League. Mm -hmm. Then another thing about the Urban League is partner. So mm -hmm. he went and talked to every president of the university of these universities and got yes, 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 yes. Come to my come to my mm -hmm. school, and we'll pay for the um, food. You know, we'll pay for the food. He um, talked to MTA, mm -hmm. and they gave us bus passes for every single student every single month. Mm. Yep. So they had the bus pass for the day, and um, mm. then we had a little um, internal committee. We called it the project management team, and it had <laughs> a young professional on it, and it had you know a gilder, a gilder, and um, were any staff on the. Well, see, zero money. So we had um, vistas at oh, that time. Oh, okay, so okay. Was me as a volunteer, um, then uh, vistas. They were it, the. It was the year before Charnice came. So Charnice okay. came as a vista. Okay. Um, so we had maybe five years of vistas mm -hmm. before we hired. You know, had the money to hire people. Okay. Um, so that was kind of the the staffing, but so at this monthly meeting with these different people, mm -hmm. then we decide what to do, and then the vistas would help execute, and I would help execute, and then we had these monthly things. And the first time, we had no idea if anyone would come, but how many people came? showed up? I think it was eighty something showed up. Um, wow! And it was at Morgan. Wow! Yeah, it was beautiful. It was really, really beautiful, and there were. Um, at uh, one of the things that was really beautiful because we we also had everybody helping us um, mm -hmm. recruit. Okay, so the guilders were sending it to. That's their what I was about to say. How yeah. did you guys market yeah, yeah, the yeah. program? It was word of mouth because unlike the yeah, Urban League now, a lot of where you have social you media, have, yeah, website, social media and, and that all is so good, we had email. So everybody just said, take your email account and just. You know, mass emails. Mass emails. And everybody does. That's when everybody emails. was opening yep. all the emails and, too, and, and getting all types of viruses too, and stuff. Yeah, well, that's true too. And then, yeah. um, so, but people sent it to their own contacts, and then, um, wow, they also, you know, their church. So uh, networking is how you got was, eighty kids to show up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And then you had we had some special relationships. So, mm -hmm. um, we had this really extraordinary. Um, assistant professor named Chris Cash, mm -hmm. um, who was actually a former student of mine at Morgan. Okay. And, uh, but he's really extraordinary person. And he um, worked at uh, Franklin Square mm -hmm. and they had, I don't know, let's say 15. Mm -hmm. 15 of their middle school students were on the roster. Mm -hmm. We paid for the van. That was the only school we did that for. We paid for the van. Mm -hmm. And then he would Called the parents. He would talk to the um, students between sessions. Hey, we're going to Goucher. Did you know that Goucher has, you know, um, you can go junior year abroad at Goucher. Everyone has to do abroad. Do you know, oh, we're going to Morgan next time. Did you know that Morgan, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So you get them all excited. We had, for that particular school, mm -hmm. we had 100% attendance every session. Wow. However, when Chris Cash um, was reassigned, mm -hmm. The next session there was zero, because that's how important that relationship wow. is. That's how important okay. so that person. That's how important relationships yes, are. are. Yeah. Wow. So that's kind of my thought. You know, is it as much as we can build mm -hmm. those kinds of relationships for the people that have the connection to them? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, Dr. Young, with such a diverse range of roles and projects, how do you stay so motivated? and what it is that you do. So there's a through line in all of these projects. So it's all about human potential and mm -hmm. for, for young people, something that really compels me is you know, um, making sure people that wanna go to college, get to college, can mm -hmm. really get access to it and can complete and then can go on and do, do big things. And so um, well, most of my projects have that kind of Vein, and then another big 
through line is um, the notion that people, so many people want to go into public service, whether uh-huh. it be teaching or mm-hmm. in the um, public bureaucracy, they go in for the right reasons. They don't need to make a lot of money. They don't need to have a lot of, you know, um, attention mm-hmm. for what they do. But they do want to be appreciated and they do want to have positive affirmation. And so mm-hmm. when they when they are in a um, what they view as a toxic environment, mm-hmm. then that gets you burned out yeah. and want to leave. And so you have um, you always have good people in mm-hmm. institutions, but those people it's not like it crescendos to be bigger. So yeah. so a big part of a lot of the projects that I've worked on, it hasn't necessarily found an audience, mm-hmm. but I have um, wanted to put together um, things um, that other people, that many people have tried to, uh, sorry, let me say it like this. So it's um, regular people's wisdom mm-hmm. about how to maintain your um, passion mm-hmm. for what you do. Yes. So um, just collected a this wisdom and we had um, <clears throat> um, a lot of the projects are like trying to disseminate it. I had a blog, I had a book, I had a podcast, I had you know webinar uh-huh. and no one bought the book and no one, <laughs> <laughs> no one listened to the podcast. <laughs> and uh, there you go. So that's, it. that's a yell. <laughs> okay. So it, with with <laughs> so with all of that right yeah. because with all the areas of opportunity yeah. that you see because no one no one listened to the book yeah. i mean no one bought the book yeah. no one li- what still keeps you motivated okay. because you are that not i'm not going to say the one person because we have a lot of people in the guild that shows yeah. up right but you are that one person that i know i can call and say dr young we need help with this and you are so excited to just jump in and help and so what keeps you motivated in that way you know yeah so so one thing is you have to realize like which dream do you let die so i'm Mm -hmm. I'm kind of letting that one die because yeah you know i'm offering a a service that no one wants so yeah just but the urban league there's no need to let any dream die because at the urban league no because you at the Urban League, if you are sitting at the table and whoever is sitting at the table with you, you guys just make your decisions mm-hmm. and then you get to move on until someone else comes to the table and says, no, we don't want to do it that mm-hmm. way. But you, I have, there's nothing wasted. No effort is ever wasted at the Urban League. Every piece of paper that I've ever produced, mm-hmm. if it's not used at that exact moment, mm-hmm. it's used later. What I'm doing now with the Grant Institute. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the Grant Institute. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the Grant Institute, so that's kind of the third passion through life. And that is about building capacity for organizations to do great things, mm-hmm. whether it be government organizations or nonprofit mm-hmm. organizations. But what, um, what holds nonprofits back so many times is that administrative Mm -hmm. stuff and knowing how to do it properly knowing how to do it so that yeah Mm -hmm. you'll you'll attract the right attention and the right resources Mm -hmm. and you can learn that stuff it's not rocket science Mm -hmm. but if you're learning it oh now i've got to go learn this and learn it all by yourself and learn yeah so it's burnout it's a burnout yeah so um I had been involved in writing grants at this mm-hmm. point for probably 15 years or so. So I, I know certain things. So mm-hmm. I condensed all that stuff that I know into a series of um, like little videos. Mm-hmm. And then they have, um, okay, if you want to know even more about that topic, you've got that too. And then I have examples and then I have, um, then I have templates for you to fill it out so that you, the Grand Institute, mm-hmm. the little team from the Urban League that's mm-hmm. currently doing the Grand Institute, they have this chance to come together for a pretty limited amount of time mm-hmm. for each topic, put their heads together on what content and how organized it needs to be for this particular aspect of a grant, and then you know you go off. 
So part of the knowledge or the experience that I used to create the Grain Institute、mm-hmm. was my all of my prior years of experience. Just like I never was able to sell my book, I was never able to sell the gospel of,、um, you know, participatory grant writing <laughs> when I when I was volunteering there, and so I would be kind of off by the side. And you know, I think that the、there. reason you weren't able to sell it sell it was because people didn't understand the importance in working the steps to get to the end to get to the finish line. Yeah. If they sat down, if a lot of times we we're, we're yeah, moving, exactly, we're moving, moving, exactly, moving, exactly, exactly. and a lot, and honestly speaking, you had to, I had to actually sit down、yes. and say, okay, shit, stop, <laughs> sit down、yes. and listen to Doctor、yeah. Young because you've written a lot of grants for us and you've been successful with the grants that you've written,、yeah. no matter how small or big、yeah. they've been, you've been successful, and so you've been pivotal in the success. And、mm-hmm. the stability of the Urban League—you've helped us a lot along the way, and so we. Oh gosh, I appreciate you. I love you for it, Dr. Young. But、um, so yeah, we never really take the time to stop and see what is good for us. Yeah. And I took the time to stop to、yeah. see what is good for us. And although it's going to take some、yes. time, right? It's not something. And we're also really excited about instant gratification. Yeah, we, we want it right now. Well,、mm-hmm. Nobody can learn how to write a grant、mm-hmm. right now.、Mm-hmm. ChatGPT can help you. Yes, it can. A little bit, right? A lot of bit actually, but lot, but not the content.、It、but not the content. The content. Yeah,、mm-hmm. you have to you have to know how to put the content together、mm-hmm. to make the grant appealing. Yeah. So, so you guys just heard me interview our second longest standing volunteer. At the Greater Baltimore Urban League. Now I want you to be able to meet some of the most important people that are at the Greater Baltimore Urban League. These are the people that make all the magic happen. Let's meet our team. What's up, everyone? I am Kobe Smith, president of the Greater Baltimore Leadership Force Association. GBLA is the Young Professional Auxiliary of the Greater Baltimore Urban League. We were founded in 2002, and our purpose is to support the objective of the Greater Baltimore Urban League by engaging young professionals from ages 21 to 40. There are many reasons to join GBLA, but the three most popular reasons are: one, giving back to the community; two, to grow professionally; and three, to build relationships. If you're interested in getting involved, use the Greater Baltimore Urban League website to register and become a member. Feel free to attend one of our GBM's general body meetings to meet our team and learn more. There are many reasons to join GBLA, but the three most popular reasons are: one, giving back to the community; two, to grow professionally; and three, to build relationships. If you're interested in getting involved, use the Greater Baltimore Urban League website to register and become a member. Feel free to attend one of our GBM's general body meetings to meet our team and learn more. We hold our GBM's every third Tuesday. Check us out on social media. We're on Instagram. See you next time. Are you ready to serve your community? Well, look no further than the Greater Baltimore Urban League Guild. My name is Carlos Maddox, and I'm the president of the Greater Baltimore Urban League Guild. It is my honor to invite you to join an historic and civil rights organization that has been uplifting and empowering communities since 1910. The Greater Baltimore Urban League Guild is a volunteer activity that supports the Greater Baltimore Urban League. Members of the guild engage in various community activities. Such as outreach, civic engagement, education, health, social and cultural activities, and much, much more. I encourage you to get involved and join the guild today. We meet the second Monday of each month. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Greater Baltimore Urban League Guild. Let's work together to empower communities and change lives because we can make a difference. 
Hi, I'm Jemiah. I'm the program coordinator over here at Greater Baltimore Urban League for Education and Programs. So we run the fund. As a Baltimore native, I understand the importance of pouring back into our community. We aspire to empower black and brown children all throughout the city. We support their matriculation, health, wealth, and secondary success. Our main program is our Saturday Leadership Program, which we call SLP, which is full of college tours, fun, enrichment activities, and leadership workshops. I'm looking forward to our program getting bigger and better, more partnerships, more funding for programs geared towards them, and scholarships for our youth in their future. Hello, I'm Harold Booker, Interim Director of Workforce Development here at the Greater Baltimore Urban League. We have a couple of exciting programs that we'd love to tell you about. We have one in construction, cybersecurity, job readiness, as well as working with people behind the fence. Follow us for more information. If you want to be more involved, if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate, if you want to just be a part of the movement, please go to www.gbul.org. Now let us get back to wrapping this interview up with Dr. Young. The power of the Grant Institute, the thing that just, well, it makes my heart go faster. Yes, is that it is the, it is not just a writing of a document that goes off. It is the Grant Institute for Program Design and Grant Writing. So when you're putting the material together, you're actually putting your plan for implementation mm -hmm. together and thinking through very deeply how to be intentional mm -hmm. about not just offering a service, but making sure that you've um, constructed that service in a way that it's going to yield the impact yes. that you want. So um, you're thinking about, as you're vying to raise money, you're thinking mm -hmm. about how to implement it successfully. And that is very exciting. And every nonprofit should want yes. to be in that space. So is the Grant Institute for sale? It is for sale and okay. this is gonna shock you, but I haven't really sold any. What? My marketing skills. I have great grant writing skills, but I have very poor marketing skills. Well, let me tell you about the Raymond V. Hayes Bird Center oh. for Entrepreneurship. And what we do, Dr. Young, what you should yes. know that we, yes, you can come there and you can get services for absolutely free. We will help you with your marketing strategies. We will help you with your branding strategies. We will help you sell that book, ah. have people listen to that podcast. Come on now, girl. We're going to help you do it all. And we do that for absolutely F-R-E-E -E free. We got you. Ah, uh, you sure do. You always have. Yeah. The Urban League always has. <laughs> okay, so what is the project that you are most proud of mm. at the Urban League mm -hmm. and why? I, it is the Saturday Leadership Program. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> it is the Saturday Leadership Program. It's such a it's huge such a, program. It is such a, a beautiful testament to what volunteers can do, what, you know, you... Um, we never raised very much money, mm -hmm. but you could actually never pay yeah. for the value yes. of what it was. So mm -hmm. you said that in the beginning of the, when SLP first um, started, that the guild was in, encounter, was engaging the parents mm -hmm. and making the um, calls, and making stuff. the community mm -hmm. calls. The YPs were the facilitators. Mm -hmm. When did that change? I think that changed with COVID. Okay. I, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So also the, the importance of the individual person. So mm -hmm. uh, a young professional named Jerome Alexander. Love Jerome Alexander. We love Jerome Alexander. Love Jerome Alexander. Yes. Mm -hmm. And here's something you probably didn't even know about him. So the first five years or so of mm -hmm. Saturday leadership, he was the YP liaison he didn't he did not facilitate sessions but he recruited the YPs, the YPs to be the facilitators, to be the facilitators. okay just like Chris Cash did with his students okay he called them the night before hey are you coming okay blah 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 and if they didn't 
didn't come or they didn't come on line, on time. He was on their phone. Hey, we waiting yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. Where you at? We'll, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till you get here. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, we don't want to wait till you get yeah. here because we're trying to send a message to young people that they should be here on be time. Be here on time. So that was a very bad thing when the YPs, if they didn't show up on time. Yeah. That was a very bad thing. But he was there. And so similarly mm -hmm. to Chris Cash, when um, Jerome left that, they were big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, okay. no one came to do that. Because it was a behind the scenes, you know, people yeah. wanted to do the facilitation, mm -hmm. but who wants to do the... Who wants to do the coordination. The coordination. Yeah. So so there was no there was no replacement for him, and that was part of what happened. But the YPs are, I mean, you know, I think they're a great resource yes, for this. Yes, they are. And that will also be how the SLP will be run mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. The YPs yeah. will be the facilitators. Yeah. Right. And you guys, I love when I, I had only, I had only come to one SLP session since mm -hmm. my children, you remember my children were a part of SLP for a short time, but, um, I had only come to one SLP session as an employee and I probably should not say that, but you know, that is, <laughs> I, I worked in a different department, so I didn't have to show up there. But when I showed up, I thought it was so awesome that all the children, mm -hmm. well, all the youth, mm -hmm. And the facilitator was in one room mm -hmm. and you and Miss Stacia were in oh, the other room right with, with the, the parents, parents mm -hmm. answering their questions, mm -hmm. or kind of giving them a small workshop mm -hmm. leadership session mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and doing the sessions that way, do you get to have, do you get to build like organic relationships with some of the parents? It's. It's so cool how it happens, I mean, yeah. and, and every year it's a little different, mm -hmm. but so um, Stacia has really been the leader um, with the parents. Too. She's I know, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. A lot of beautiful people yes. in the Urban League. Um, but so she has, you know, um, kind of this agenda, but she makes a point of going around and, you know, different parents say different things. And then there was one parent one time that talked about community service and, hey, you know, your kids don't have to get 75. If, if they do more than 75 hours, if they do a lot more, then they can get scholarships. Mm -hmm. And so then one time she talked about community service. Mm -hmm. Then there was another parent who um, had found scholarships. And so she came and talked about scholarships. So each of the parents have come to um, uh, talk about, you know, mm -hmm. talk about stuff in each session and then there was a parent who talked about self-care so mm -hmm. oh and so do you ever have the parents come back and be facilitators so we have, we have. Um, so it, you know it's kind of like the urban league is um you have this basic structure but there's there's just so much room the yeah. door is always open are it you <laughs> Whatever it is that you're interested uh -huh. in, whatever it is that you have in your heart and whatever skills you have, um, you know, there's not just one place for you in the Urban League. Uh -huh. There's there's just, it's open. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that, so, so um, parents help with the facilitate sessions, mm -hmm. um, young professionals, uh, have they done stuff with the parents? Mm -hmm. I mean, they say, uh -huh. you know, I, I mean, I'm just trying to think like at yeah. that time, but, but, um, the, but they were most likely, mostly engaged with their students. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, um, you are probably the best advocate for the greater Baltimore urban league. So I would like for you to look in the camera mm -hmm. and tell anyone who is out there from anywhere, why they should want to be involved with the auxiliaries at the urban league. Okay. So we are all looking for meaning and purpose, especially in these times of um, so much, we don't even have to say, so so much, so much disappointment, so much um, conflict. Um, but the auxiliaries in the Urban League are such a unique volunteer opportunity because each Urban League um, has <clears throat> a volunteer auxiliary that the older people are 40 and over and the younger people uh, um, uh, 40 and younger but each of the um, auxiliaries has committees associated with each of the priorities mm -hmm. of the urban league so there's a public health committee there's a youth or education committee there's an advocacy committee um, there's a 
Um, there's a social and cultural committee. There's um, everything that the Urban League done, does is um, done in an organized fashion, is supported in an organized fashion by the auxiliaries. And then you just, the committees, just like everything, committees are all open and you can either be a member of the committee or you can be, you can even be the chair of the committee. Um, and the, the members and the chair of the committee together, they meet and they get to plan outreach activities or educational activities or fundraising, whatever, activities. fundraising activities, whatever it is that they're doing to support the Urban League. And you get to you get to do it. You're you're working on the administrative side as a volunteer, and you can see the organization and its purpose move forward. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? I just I don't know. I absolutely love you. <laughs> you guys heard it. You guys heard why everyone that is watching this screen should want to be involved in the Urban League in some way. And if you want to get involved, I suggest that you go to gbul.org and sign up to be either a YP if you're 21 and four, to 40, I'm sorry, 21 to 40 years old because they kicked me out. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a Gilder if you're 41 and over. That is amazing. That's it. You just... <laughs> We should have created like a, a commercial or something. Like, who wouldn't want to do that? Like, that, <laughs> that was amazing. And that is why I wanted you here oh, because you. I wanted Baltimore mm -hmm. and abroad to see the importance of service here at the Greater Baltimore Urban League. You and I were on the phone one hmm. day and you said to me, there is no nonprofit. Hmm in the state that does mm -hmm. what the Greater Baltimore Urban League does. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you meant by that. So I mean that if you look at the staff structure, mm -hmm. how many <clears throat> paid staff you have, mm -hmm. and then you look at the broad, almost ridiculous mission, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> it's very, it, it is very, very challenging. It's very, very challenging, yes. you know, to secure economic self-sufficiency, parity, power, and civil rights. One organization with five paid staff members. Yeah. But they do that. And how do they do that? They do that by all of these different strategies. You have outreach, you have programs, you have advocacy, you have um, convening, you have um, uh, collaborations, and you have uh, volunteer mobilization. Boom, 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 boom. So you're doing all of these issues, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, all of these issues, all of these different strategies, and then you have the uh, the target populations, you know, public, uh, health disparities, mm -hmm. um, educational disparities, work disparities, um, income disparities, mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know, disparities in terms of access to um, political capital. Yes, yeah, for small capital. Businesses. Oh my yes. gosh, housing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you have all of these different issues. Five paid staff members. It's ridiculous, but how yeah. does the Urban League do it? It does it by this combination of the volunteer auxiliaries who mm -hmm. are all organized along those issues and also, um, you know, partnerships. Partnerships. Um, collaborating, um, yes. yep, with um, government, mm -hmm. corporate, and other um, nonprofit actors. And, um, uh, you know, so that is how they move forward to this lofty mission with essentially no financial resources. Yeah, very, very few a while, I mean, a few years ago. Yeah. We have definitely, um, you know, matured yes. in our bank account. Yes. And so we are able to help a lot more people in the, um, in the city. We have... A cybersecurity program that we have graduated over 25 students. Um, we have a construction cohort where we have graduated over 25 students. We have our SLP program mm -hmm. where we have graduated 
over 200 mm -hmm. students, right? Mm -hmm. Over 200 mm -hmm. students yeah. in the SLP program. And so I always say one of my pitch lines about the Greater Baltimore Urban League when I'm trying to get people to like buy in yeah. to what it is that we do. <laughs> There's not one household in this state yeah. that we cannot impact. Yes. It doesn't matter what social class you're in. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you are from a disadvantaged area, there are surely ways that we can help you, right? If you are from a middle class area, mm -hmm. there are ways that we can help you as far as assistance, as far as education, as far as um, our opening up our network, if you're a small business owner. Yes, yes, yes. And if mm -hmm. you are living in the, um, the higher class areas, yeah. we can help you by presenting you with something that you are able to invest in to give you purpose. So there is not one household in the That's state beautiful. of Maryland yeah. that we cannot mm -hmm. impact. That's beautiful. Yeah, that I got that so from true. you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is that true. Is true. Yeah. So you have been a faculty member at Bowie, mm -hmm. Morgan State, yeah. and Baltimore Community College, or is it Community College of Baltimore County? Which one? CCBC, Community okay. College of Baltimore County, but that not faculty there. But. Okay. How have these experiences differed and what you've learned from each institution? Mm. Yeah. So Bowie State was my first um, uh, position out once I finished my PhD mm -hmm. and big dreams about teaching. And then I, I didn't recognize a very basic thing, which is you actually have to do your job description. You can't just do your passion projects. Not at university. No. Right. <laughs> so I was busily doing all my passion projects, and then I forgot to do the research part, which is what you need to continue. So, yeah. So I didn't. Um, trial and error. That was trial and error. Yeah. And then um, at, at Morgan, it was a little bit more of the same. So mm -hmm. I didn't quite learn. And then that was when I said, you know, I am not interested in the research part. Mm -hmm. So then I went to do um, yeah, retention work, work mm -hmm. at a community college. Mm -hmm. And then, and that was awesome. And I mean, the, I loved advising, faculty advising. I loved a lot of aspects about um, teaching. And then I got to do, I got to have this, advise this student group called Operation Potential, which was, you know, just, um, Students helping students reach their potential, so uh -huh. it, was a, it was really fun. But um, at the community college, I got to apply the research on mm -hmm. student um, completion, student graduation, mm -hmm. and the nursing graduation rate. When I started this program, because they, you know, there was state money to increase uh -huh. the um, the number of nurses in Maryland. Uh -huh. The black graduation rate when I got there was 22%. The white graduation, two on time graduation rate, um, was 44%. Mm. Two and a half years later, two and a half years later, the black graduation rate was 68%. And Come on tripled. now. The white graduation rate was 68%. So they had reached parity. And it was Come all on. it was was applying evidence, which is why I harp on that. Evidence-based evidence practice, mm -hmm. and then you know you work your butt off, and then it's you know those two things in combination. Yeah, they just that's why it's the if the research doesn't says fail. it's gonna it doesn't it doesn't never fail. fails you never fails never, never fails you so so that was really cool, and then um, you know I had this opportunity to just go off on my own, mm -hmm. and then so I left the community college and um, just started you know doing grant writing as a business. And so I was about to transition yeah. right into that. So talk to the people about your, there are a lot of companies mm -hmm. that are, especially nonprofits mm -hmm. that call us and mm -hmm. say, I'm looking for grants. Yeah. And I'm like, you need to go find a grant writer. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, oh, not, not talk to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, how can someone mm -hmm. hire you? to be a grant writer for their organization. Yeah, so um, what I have come to understand mm -hmm. in the nonprofit world, so most of the, the grants that I actually write over the past decades have been for universities. Mm -hmm. And so they're applying for federal grants and so they have, you know, that gives you more 
cash to work with mm -hmm. to hire someone. Mm -hmm. But a nonprofit, if you're um, applying for a $10,000 grant, mm -hmm. $20,000 grant, um, it's not you don't have five or ten thousand dollars to hire someone to dig around all your files mm -hmm. and organize everything you know do all that so my strategy this the main strategy of my company which i haven't sold any but the main strategy <laughs> of my company is to um Say, no, let me show you how to, you know, gather all the information, the, the right information, um, organize it, um, think about, you know, what is it that your nonprofit does so uniquely mm -hmm. to meet the need and so effectively. And um, so you think through all those things. And then the writer, once you've, you've got this series of templates completed, mm -hmm. if you want to hire a writer, mm -hmm. the writer has all of the content mm -hmm. because instead it's as if you go to your accountant to do your taxes and you take your you know Safeway bag of all your receipts from the year and you say <laughs> can you do my taxes please mm -hmm. and the accountant says no you have to go organize those put mm -hmm. together so, so yeah. the same the same concept mm -hmm. if a nonprofit wants a grant written they need to give the it, for it to be not prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. The nonprofit needs to organize it. So that's what the Grant Institute is trying to do: is be that bridge between um, and uh, hiring a grant writer in an affordable way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you, I get, get it, it now. Okay. So you you teach the organization how to. Build the content yep. needed in the organized way. In an organized way for the grant, and then they give that yep. Yep. nicely prepared yep. document right. to the grant writer. Yeah, and the grant writer then uses Types the that text around it and makes the tables and all that stuff. Okay, but okay. I don't have to. I don't have to think of what your argument is. Yes. You've given it to me. So, yeah. My question is. Mm -hmm. If there's a business that didn't want to do the Grant Institute, right, but wanted to hire you right. as their grant writer, how would they do that? Okay, so I will just say first off that it's twenty thousand dollars. If you want me to do all the work, I know the amount of time because mm -hmm. I've done it now. Mm -hmm. I did it for the Urban League, mm -hmm. and successfully. Successfully, but I was a volunteer. Right. If you had paid you couldn't have paid me right we the, didn't have the money to pay you didn't have the right. money to pay not me for hours. yeah right <laughs> the hours that it would have taken to get all that stuff organized and yeah. that's that's the crux of the problem mm -hmm. so if a nonprofit doesn't have the time they are going to they, they either have to do one or the other mm -hmm. they have to pay someone to assemble the material for them mm -hmm. or they or have, they to, have do to learn how to do it yeah that's yeah. the choice and that paying someone is twenty thousand dollars but if they in assemble advance. it themselves. <laughs> in advance. Give me my check. No. <laughs> because. In advance. Well, yes, because the, the time, that, that's another thing that got us into the Grand Institute, because the time that we, my partner and I did this for a nonprofit, mm -hmm. we did not demand that he give it to us in advance, so then it just didn't come oh. at all. Oh. So. Okay. Yes. So um, let's talk. Uh, let's talk to entrepreneurs about set, setting your price <laughs> and standing on business. Okay, <laughs> she yeah. said that's going to be twenty thousand yeah. dollars in advance. <laughs> no, I cannot wait. Yeah, I need it in advance yeah. before I even pick up one piece of paper. Yeah. So that's why I don't really do. Yeah, I don't really offer a grant you know, to write your grant for you because you cannot afford to pay me but what it costs. You can offer to teach them yes. how to write the grant. How to prepare, yes. I can teach them how to gather the material, organize the material that you need. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to hire me or somebody else to write it, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. That is amazing. So how would people get in touch with you? Yes. So, um, of course... Young at gbul.org is my um, volunteer 
uh, email okay. and my business email is Estelle at capacity for nonprofits dot org. And uh, if you um, social I media, have, I see I don't have social media, but I have okay. a website. Okay, I have a website. You have a website, and uh, our website is capacity for nonprofits dot org. No dot com. Com. Okay. Com. So we. Next time Dr. Young is back here, she will have social media because we will work on her marketing and branding so that, so that the podcast is not the first time that you guys hear about her company. Right, beautiful? Okay. Okay, you guys. Today has been amazing interviewing our third longest volunteer at the Greater Baltimore Urban League. The Greater Baltimore Urban League absolutely adores you. And we are so happy to have you in our fold. How'd you feel about today? Oh, it was, a, it's a beautiful day. I mean, I, I feel always very um, loved and beloved by the greater Baltimore Urban League. They really treated me very, very well. And, um, right. and you know, I love the Urban League, what can I say? Absolutely. Well, there you guys have heard it. She loves the Urban League and you guys should love the greater Baltimore <laughs> Urban League too. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for today's episode, you guys. Until next time, peace.